just doesn't make any sense. We never truly know why. No, she wouldn't kill herself. Why are these pictures gone? There were photos here. There were photos of my sister and I. This is all that she had left of us, and they're missing. Why? She told me on the news she wanted to talk about the missing girl, Amber Lynn. She wanted to tell me something about her, maybe. She couldn't tell me over the phone because she was afraid that they would do something like this to her. Who? Whoever took my sister. Look at this place. I mean, it's like it's, it's all stays. The pills, the oven, the tape. It's like a bad movie script. They would have they would have come here and they would have threatened her. She would be upset. They would have to sedate her. I would look for a uh, a needle puncture mark or, or something else in her system besides these pills. No, Mulder. Please don't ask me to do this. Golly, who else can I ask? An autopsy, Mulder. I mean. It's, it's one thing on a stranger, but you're my friend and she's your mother. I know, but if you don't do it, I might never know the truth. Hello and welcome to Most Unwanted X-Files podcast. I am Luke and I am joined by Checkers. Who's got Checks? Checkers, yeah, I'm good. Thank you, yourself. <laughs> I'm not too bad, yeah. Uh, I don't think I've ever called you Checkers. I've seen it on your screen name once, but I've never said it out loud. I so Checkers was, um, I changed my last name when I was 12, 13, I think it was. And, um, Checkers was the nickname I tried to get going. That, <laughs> you know, how you know, because I was mm. like, you don't understand how big an opportunity that is for a 12 year old. I could like choose, like I was changing my name so like I could go into school and choose my nickname like that was huge and I it was always gonna be checkers and like all my email was checkers like my MSN and MySpace they were all checkers and um, never caught on never caught no. on checks checks or just stuff yeah I think as soon as you can simplify somebody's nickname down to one syllable that's it like that yeah that's why that- I struggle. That's why you've never had a nickname, yeah? Luke is just perfect as is. Literally never had one. It's like, yeah, that'll do. (laughs) Oh, well, never mind. Maybe someday. It's Um, not not like your last name can't really be a nickname either, can it? Like, Costin, Somebody. It always makes it longer if you you try and make it into a nickname. Somebody tried to do it once and made puns about, like, yeah, cost and, like, price or something like that. But it's like, but it it ended up just being, like, yeah, so much longer. And it's like, that's not really a nickname, is it? It's just a (laughs) terrible name that you've just given me. (laughs) (laughs) But anyway, yeah. Um, So, yeah, how have you been, anyway? Yeah, not so bad. I can't complain. We've we've just, I think we've just got to the end of our second little heat wave in the UK, Mm. which... um, as a typical UK citizen, it was horrendous. <laughs> just oh, I, I, I love the heat. I do. I am absolutely praying for the winter now. Though oh, I just, I just want to be able to control my own temperature. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It it is it is nice to just be able to yeah just put on a jumper or something to yeah exactly of, yeah you get the blankets remove, out. You can't remove skin, unfortunately. Well, I mean you can, but you know it's not advised. It's, it's frowned upon. Yeah, it is frowned yeah. upon. I don't know whether maybe not in the rest of the world, but the UK it's certainly frowned upon. Well, yeah, definitely. But hey oh, um we we, we live on. <laughs> um, <laughs> um yeah, so uh yeah, I know uh personally as well I've been uh we've been doing uh wedding stuff lately as well, more wedding stuff. Yes, 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 yes. It's exciting yeah. stuff. It is, it is. Uh, there's a lot lot to do. Uh, we've sort of been going through the planning and stuff like that. Uh and yeah, it's uh there's a lot of things to do on there, but you know, uh, as you know, as you well know, I certainly do. I, you know what? When when me and Jem got married, um, it was very, it's very stressful. I, I mean, I, 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 you know, I'm not saying anything that nobody doesn't know already, but it is very stressful all the way up until the day. But it is, a, it's a lovely feeling, and obviously, you've got the wedding itself, which is obviously going to be the best mm. part of the day. Yeah, but it is a lovely feeling. To walk into a room afterwards, the best advice I can give you basically is to sort of just take five minutes on the day to just appreciate it. Because yeah. it is a lovely feeling to walk into a room. And how often do you get to walk into a room where everyone that you love and care about is there for you? 
Mm. Do you know what I mean? It just it just feel it, it's a nice day to have that sort of thing, and it, it so it is. It definitely is all worth it in the end, and I've got to say, I love a wedding to, wow. like as a guest, so I'm very much looking forward to it. It's wow, um, definitely yeah, and and as my best man as well, <laughs> you're you're gonna have a lot of planning to do. I, why? Well, I mean, planning. Mate, it's not my strong point, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> we'll. Uh, um, but- I'm there. To, I'm there for drinks and vibes. That's what I'm there for. <laughs> I was debating this the other day. I was like, "How shall I tell him?" I was like, <laughs> "I was like, I'm just going to tell him on a podcast." <laughs> you caught me a little off guard. I'm not going to lie, <laughs> because <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna. I'm looking forward to listening to this back because immediately in my head has gone. Oh my god, he's told me and I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling he was like, uh, you saw so a post and he was like, pl- how do I play this <laughs> live on a podcast? Yeah, I had a, fe- I had a feeling you didn't realize. <laughs> He's like, oh shit. <laughs> oh. oh my God. <laughs> you know what? It's like, I'm glad because, my God, I felt the worst I've ever felt. <laughs> he was like, oh no, when did he tell me? <laughs> oh. It could be worse. I remember you you told me basically in the back of the car and you was like, I did, oh, the, same, you've got- I did the exact same thing. So you know <laughs> what? It kind of, it's kind of fitting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, oh, look, well, look at this. We've got to share this moment with, 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 with the rest of the people world. around the world. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is lovely. It would be an absolute privilege. Oh, there you go. Right, oh. no stag party planning. That, that that's the next thing. Well, you know what? <laughs> you know, you know what? I'll tell you something for good vibes. This episode of the X Files is perfect. To sort of really gets into the stag party mood. <laughs> yeah, there, there can't be anything <laughs> depressing about this episode. <laughs> <It> ends. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe we should get into sign and zeit. This is episode uh, 10. <laughs> Sorry, I was looking at our own episode. It was like 169. Um, <laughs> this is episode 10 of series 7, uh, entitled Sign und Zeit, um, which is German. Uh, and it stands for, uh, just let me find it, Being and Time. Um, I honestly completely forgot to look what it meant. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, being in time. Being and time. Oh, so, being I mean, and time. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know what the relation is. Um, apparently, it's based on a, a, a the seminal work of Martin Heidegger, which I think is like um, uh, what's what do you call it now? Philosophy book or something like that. Okay, um, okay. So I think it's something similar to that. So maybe there's something in this book that matches with this, but who knows? Uh, I didn't look too much deeper than that. I did look deeper into other things, but I'll get to that when, <laughs> when we get to it. Um, so this was directed by Michael Watkins, uh, written by Chris Carter and Frank Spotnitz, and the original air date was February the 6th, 2000. Um, so the opening scene, we're in Califor- uh, Sac- Sacramento, California. Let's get the place right. Uh, <laughs> and we see a girl being tucked into bed by her parents. Um, it all seems it's like idyllic scene really um of this like suburban family we see the dad watching tv um i you know, can i i fully related to this moment <laughs> can i tell so you I, why go on <laughs> you know i it made me laugh when i saw it and then i was like oh god i do that and it was <laughs> when he had them he had the remote and he was watching a film he liked and then he out it said out loud this is good yeah <laughs> and I, I, I laughed and i was like no, I do that. I do. That. I say. I say out loud. Oh, this is good. <laughs> Funnily enough, I wrote as my note the dad using our review technique here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good it is episode. Good. It's it is good. good episode. Is good. He'd, um, he'd make a great podcaster. No, we should get him on. We we should. But yeah, did you recognize him as well? I didn't realize until a bit later on. No, I didn't recognize him at all. He's in uh, Short Term Redemption. He's the uh, one of the guys who's like. Uh, sexually assault in the main character, basically. Ooh, uh, I couldn't no. put that in any better way, really. That's, the, <laughs> that's his entire character arc. No, I didn't recognise him. No, okay. Um, so he's a, he plays a little bit of a nicer character in this. In yeah, this yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, do you want to know the other thing about this this film? And th- when you know this, it's even more hilarious. This scene is Go so. On. 
he's watching this. It's a TV series. He's watching a TV series, and he says, "Wow, this is good." Guess who created this TV series? Oh, it's not Chris Carter's, is it? <laughs> it's Chris Carter. Unbelievable. This is, this is Harsh Realm by Chris Chris Carter. Shameless. Absolutely <laughs> shameless. Guess who's this? In this is good. Oh. Chris Carter wrote in the script, this is good. Yeah, yeah. Um, Unbelievable. Do you want to know and then another? later on in the episode, they talk about the TV show again, and I was like, maybe this TV show means something, and then I completely <laughs> forgot about it. They talk about it again, it's like... What was it? I don't know, but it was really good. It was really, he's just his, his, his daughter's gone missing, and he's still commenting on how good the TV show was. But have you ever watched a TV show that's that good that if like somebody invaded your house, you'd be like, "I was watching this TV show, and then this guy burst in." But honestly, this TV show. Is that Listen, me? my daughter got kidnapped, but I did find this new TV show. Kind of balanced it, it out. Yeah, it was an all white night. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> A little bit of this, a little bit little of that. A little bit of that, yeah. You don't yeah. want too much good or bad. You just yeah. like the, the sweet spots. <laughs> Swings and roundabouts. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, it's, so yeah, it's called Harsh Realm by Chris Carter. Uh, it only had 10 episodes, I think. Uh, and guess who was in this TV show? Ooh, was it Covo? It wasn't Covo. It's uh, Prepare Your Ears, everybody. <laughs> It was John Locke from Lost. <laughs> um, yeah, Terry isn't O'Quinn. He, isn't he in um, Millennium as well? Oh, good question. I'm not sure, actually. I'm going to search be. for that, because I've got a feeling he's a pretty... Because, you know the character he plays in um, X-Files? Yeah, yeah, the, well, He plays two, doesn't he? He was the bomb disposal in, in the guy. the film. Oh, in the film, yeah. The bomb disposal guy in the film. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's, it's, it's not that. Let me have a look. Go on, carry on. I'll, I'll find this out. But anyway, yeah. So he's he's uh, just going through the bat, the the best, the best, the rest of the wrap up. Um, he's watching this, and uh, we see the mom writing a note, which we later find out is a ransom note that she's writing. Um, and she looks like she's in this kind of like fugue state where she's just not in control. Um, we see I think the I've dad completely made that up by, about um, <laughs> about Terry right, O'Quinn. By the way, I don't know what yeah. I was thinking of. <laughs> maybe, maybe he's in something else that's related. But we'll, maybe who knows. Um, the dad goes to check on the kid. Um, to just, I, I don't know why he does. He, he is a blow bang. Oh, does he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, there's a lot of the notes that I've had to fill in from memory, <laughs> if I'll be yeah. honest, because I was like, oh, I took the took the notes as we usually do. And sort of work on them, and I was like, "Oh, there's a lot of detail that's left out of this, these notes." Yeah. So I'm like, "Had to he, fill." He is in. a loud bang, and then he yeah. uh, he just goes up to explore, basically. Yeah, um. So he goes in, and he sees his child there, picks her up, and it looks like she's dead. It looks mm-hmm. like a dead body, essentially. Um. He sort of panics, but then snaps out of it and sees that she's she's fine. Basically, there's nothing wrong with her. Thinks nothing of it. Leaves the room. And then notices this like ooze, this like I don't know what it is. It's like this red sort of I liquid. thought it might be blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not really explained. They, they don't really mention this ever again. But no. yeah, we see this kind of like red liquid coming from under the door. The door's locked as well, and um, the dad breaks down the door, and then we see that the child is missing, and that that's the intro basically. Um, what do you mm-hmm. think of this? Um, it was interesting. I uh, yeah, it was a bit of a, your standard X Files intro, to be honest. Um, but like. As we go through the episode, I actually quite it made me more and more fond of the intro. Mm. Um, I am sort of skipping ahead a little bit as to what I thought of, thought of like the at least the first half. It was nice to get back, and I, I feel I, I don't know whether we've not had them a lot recently. I can't really remember too many. It felt nice to get back to mystery episodes mm. where I was like trying. I didn't know what was going on all the way through the episode, and I was trying to figure it out as we went and put pieces together. Yeah, um, and and so this in, in that respect, this intro was really good because it really just set up this like, oh, what is going on? Especially yeah. with the the mom writing the letter as well, and, and there was also that um, line at the bottom of the letter of um, yes, what was it like? Uh, uh, nobody shoots at Santa Claus. Nobody or something shoots like at that. Santa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so um, he was like, what? what does that mean? What's going mm-hmm. on there? They, they yeah they mentioned that later on as well but yeah it it is you do see it at the time um well I don't know if you do see it at the time where yeah writing. you do I yeah. up, it was quite bad handwriting so I was mm. trying to read it and I couldn't I, I read like certain lines like um don't be stupid or don't be a fool mm. or something like that yeah but the, that was the one line I could read which is nobody shoots at Santa yeah um 
after the intro, uh, we see Mulder and his casuals uh, rock up at the FBI building. And uh, we see um, Skinner basically running this round-the-clock team to try and find more about this this um, missing girl's case. Mm-hmm. And we find out her name is Amber, uh, Amber Lynn Lepere, Lepierre, in it, I think. Yeah, Lepierre. Um, again, I'm terrible with the pronunciation, <laughs> especially if it's a Fren- French pronunciation. I am awful at it. Um, but yeah, we find out she's disappeared from her home. They're actually they're trying to figure out uh, what's happened to her. And Mulder just wants to be involved with this case. Obviously, we can kind of see why this is. Initially, I thought, oh, okay, this is aliens. Like, this has got to be some kind of um, link to... I mean, it, it is kind of a link to his sister. But I thought it was going to be about this alien conspiracy that we've been led to believe all the way through. Um, but yeah, he's definitely involved from that kind of angle, basically. There is a, a point, especially in this scene, that I wanted to bring up with you. Um, I found that in this episode as a whole, it sent it, it felt a little bit more downbeat. It felt like um, mm. it felt like it was making an effort to try and be a little bit more serious. And as I went through it, I came to the conclusion that I think it's because that of the situation they're dealing with, which is like the the kidnap or loss or death of a child yeah yeah and and all the way through that oh, don't get me wrong it's if i'm not saying oh the, why, why are they so sad about it like obviously it's a it's a yeah. tough subject but i feel like maybe i'm a little bit desensitized to it now because it's not like it doesn't feel like a a subject that's taboo on te- television do you know what i mean mm. like I, yeah. you see it in tons of shows um and so it felt a little bit weird that it was like being treated as so sort of serious, like I, it was shocking to me to see sort of see Skinner like almost scold Mulder for wanting to get involved. It's like, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. And I feel like that's because of what it was dealing with, mm. um, which is an interesting. I don't know whether it, it was maybe it was just like a little bit more taboo at the time. I don't know. I, it, do, do you see what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah. See, I wonder as well if like because I know back in like the 2000s, especially the very early 2000s. In the UK, like um, child abduction and stuff like that was such a like hot issue. Like yeah. there was like high, it's really very, high profile cases. Like sure. the um, the papers were like proper witch hunty about like trying to find people who were on like sex registers and stuff like that. Um, and there was all this kind of like yeah, it was proper uh, proper like a, a witch hunt around this, and like they were fear mongering all this stuff. I wonder if it was the same in America. I have no idea if it was. No, I'm not yeah, sure. a, I wonder if uh, and like people in America could let us know, but I know Britain at the time was like, yeah, that was everywhere in the news. So I wonder if it was a similar kind of thing, and maybe back then it was more of a like you cannot joke about this at all. Yeah, possibly, or may it could have also been a creative choice as well, because obviously you get Mulder going through um quite a lot of trauma in this episode as well, and so maybe it's a reflection of that. Mm. Um, but it just didn't feel to have like the same sort of quirkiness or the quips, and I actually think that benefited the episode. Oh, to be yeah, honest, definitely, yeah, yeah. It, it proper. Um, I keep saying proper. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, it, it it really felt like um, it was kind of like a character study on Mulder and his grief mm. and loss. For sure, uh, so for yeah, sure. m- maybe that's why they strip back on the the jokey elements. And also, we've had quite a lot of jokey episodes, I guess. So yeah, yeah. maybe it was time for a, a deathly serious one. I think and, it made a nice change of pace for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, as you mentioned. Um, Skinner basically flat out tells him no. He says, this isn't an X-File. This is a missing person's case. We can't have you on this. But Mulder eventually convinces him. He gives him till noon, basically, um, to if he can find anything. Um, also, he mentioned something which I thought was, talking of it being dark again, The um, he says that the, the rest of the office have a, a, a pool going basically mm-hmm. saying that she's dead the, the origin of the word deadpool and it is like from that kind of thing yeah yeah um which i just think i mean i'm almost certain this kind of thing goes on like you know what I mean? oh like, we've like, t- we've spoke about this before is it what's yeah. a good gallows humor or something yeah, like that yeah um yeah i can fully believe this sort of thing happens but i feel like you've got to have something like that to keep you sane yeah, you've got to just, detach yourself from it. You've got to look at it as if it's like a TV show, haven't you? Yeah, I, I, I just think yeah, from the outside looking in, it looks incredibly um, morose and like yeah, you wouldn't of, want yeah. the victims' families in the hallway <laughs> yeah, next to you, would you? Yeah, exactly. Um, 
Talking of the victim's family, uh, we now go to Mulder going to meet Billy and Bud, who are the parents, mm -hmm. um, and they explain exactly what we'd seen. Um, they mentioned that they found a note, not that she'd written a note. They just said they found it in the girl's bedroom. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it shows, um, well, as we'd already seen, she'd written it herself, but she has no memory of this at all. Um, they also mentioned that the note mentions Santa Claus at the bottom, which yeah, we um, we sort of brought up. <laughs> There's also uh, their lawyer um, was an interesting point here. Um, yeah. Absolutely gets bodied by <laughs> completely Hollywooded. <laughs> Well, he's a, he, what does he say? He's like a, a property lawyer or something like that, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, real estate he's completely, attorney. Yeah, completely out of his depth. Yeah. Um, Mulder just says, get a real lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, a man who way to devalue his entire career, <laughs> It, Yeah, it was... Um, <laughs> well, basically, like like they said, they have, they, they have nothing to hide, or at least they yeah. don't think they do. You can tell... They they film it in such a way that you can tell they're lying when she says she hasn't wrote it. Obviously, we know she hasn't. Mm, yeah. Um, this is the this is the part where I sort of went. I could see sort of where they were going with it, and I, God, I just kept on putting myself into because it was quite a like I said, it was quite a morose <laughs> episode. I kept on putting myself into sort of their situation because I could, couldn't help but think like, what a horrible situation that must be that you put into. The worst position you ever want to be put into, and then having to choose a lawyer and lawyer up. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, how because horrific it, must that because be? Because, like, they're all evidence seems to point to you at this moment. Well, time, which, yeah. and let's be honest, it, like, what it was, it, the statistics was something ridiculous, like 80% of child abduction is something to do with parents or someone the parent knows. Yeah, so, yeah. You know what I mean? So, you can understand why parents do lawyer up. And it, it doesn't look great, does it? Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. Like, it looks horrendous, but. Yeah. You can understand why they do it. And it's like, imagine having to make that decision. You know what I mean? At what point do you stop grieving? It's, oh, yeah, God. Yeah. And there's a lot of it's, things in this episode like that where it's sort of like, it, it, you, it, you've got all the mystical elements and all the mystery to it, but what grounds it is like this very sort of just serious crime where it's yeah, like, ah, yeah. oh, this, this, this sucks. This yeah, just this, isn't this, a nice to watch. It's not fun at all. <laughs> like, no, it's no. It is literally... Yeah, you strip away the supernatural elements to it. This is a child abduction story. There's nothing. Yeah. There's nothing fun to this. This is just incredibly dark and incredibly depressing. Which I wonder whether that was in the back of Chris Carter's mind as well of going mm -hmm. right. Let's. I understand why um, Samantha going missing over the last seven seasons has become this sort of myth, this fairy tale, this like this thing that we all just accept. So why not let's break it down and just remind everyone. That this was a child abduction, mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah. how serious that is because you don't think of Samantha going missing as that as serious as that, do yeah. you? Because you just think, oh, it's an alien ever ever abducted her and stuff yeah. like this. It's like, yeah, it's, it's got this fantastical. It kind of like, um, not to completely <laughs> derail this. This is going to be a weird comparison, but like, it'd be like the story of Labyrinth in Irene. That's the same kind of thing. You know, Irene, a kid gets abducted. By David Bowie as a fairy, you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But when you strip away that, <laughs> David Bowie abducts, uh, abducts a child. <laughs> it's yeah, exactly. really dark. Yeah. But but yeah, you add the fantastical element to it, and it's this like more not upbeat. And I'm not saying like uh, an alien abducting somebody's an upbeat story, but it it kind of softens it. It takes the yeah, edges off. Sure. You know what I mean? True. Um, it stops yeah. people relating to it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um. But anyway, yeah. So uh, they, yeah, their their uh, attorney gets sort of absolutely bodied by Mulder, uh, and they basically go through the story. They explain that they have no knowledge of what's happening here, and Mulder kind of says, "I'm going to help you. Like, I'm going to I'm going to solve this for you," um, and leaves it with them at that. Um, all the evidence seems to point to them, but yeah, yeah, they don't have any. Uh, they don't seem to know anybody who's um, an enemy or anything like that. Again, there's there's nothing that seems to point outside. Um, but anyway, um, we then see Scully turn up in California um, at a motel at night, and we see Mulder watching a report on of this story on the news, just sat in the dark on his own. Um, and uh, she's been sent there because apparently he's, uh, the report that he was meant to get to Skinner just didn't turn up because he's not written one, which has royally pissed off Skinner because it's seemed to waste their time. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, uh, it's just, you can tell at this point that this has got this personal connection to, to Mulder. 
And yes. Scully's been sent there really to, as much as to try and check, to get this report as to just check on him and just make sure that he's okay. That, that I think they all know that it's, it's bringing it cl- too close to home, you know what I mean? For sure. I think there's an interesting side plot to this whole story of Scully going back to complete skeptic again. Um, and then as I watched it, the more the more I watched, the more I realized she's not gone back to full skeptic. She's trying to bring Mulder back from just insanity. Of like, yeah. He's going to drive himself mad if he keeps on being personally involved in this case. Mm-hmm. Um, so she's not like naysaying for no reason. She's trying to talk sense to him. Basically, yeah. And I think at this point, yeah, you need... <laughs> Uh, yeah, Mulder, sort of without a shadow of a doubt, needs Scully in this moment. Yes, yeah, like because I don't think he. I, there's a few moments in this in this episode where I don't think he, he copes without Scully there at a, at yeah. one way or another. Um, a weird comparison, but I've just been seeing this a lot. And um, we've started watching Catfish, the TV show. Now I know it's got its detractors of is it real, is it fake? You know how much is staged and stuff like that. Whatever. Yeah. Um. I like the parts where one of the hosts is like, so this person is like, I can't wait to meet him. I can't wait to see. And they're just like, you know, this might be all bullshit, right? And they have to like ground them and just tell them this might not be the fairy tale ending you're expecting. And they, they always seem to be annoyed by this. And it's like, but what do you mean? Like they was watching this one and she was like, you don't know. It was all fine in the end. But like, she was like, why are you telling me this? I'm trying to go and see this person. You, you're giving me this. And he's like, we have to be honest, you know. Yeah, and this yeah, seems yeah. Like it you might need make... someone there. Yeah. You do, and yeah, obviously a strange comparison to catfish. But I think whenever you're sort of too close to something and you're too deeply invested in it personally, you need somebody to just go step back. Because yeah, I think look... that's it. I mean, you say it's a strange comparison. I think it's very apt. Where mm. it is that, like, and that that is like real life, and it is mm. like comparing it to real life. And yeah, it's like you do. You it's when you get so. You can get like a glaze over your eyes when you're too mm. personally involved, which is exactly what Mulder is. Mulder can't see the logic of the facts around him, and even when he does, it's warped, and he warps mm-hmm. it to sort of see what he wants to see. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and we get a call from Munda in this this instance. Mm. She's seen all this happening, um, and she um, she's called out to to Mulder to basically say, um, "Are you there? Are you investigating this?" Uh, he sort of explains it that he is, and she basically says that she has something to tell him. Call, call her back, basically, or, or basically visit her. I think is what is is yeah. what's implied that he needs to go and talk to his mom. And he says he will, but he's too busy at the moment. Um, I I wrote a note at this point, which um, seems very in bad taste. Um, oh. by the end of the episode, I put Munda up and at him uh, because. <laughs> <laughs> The last time we saw her, she was in a hospital bed. Now I saw her on the phone. I was like, oh, Mumda, back in the action? Not for long. Oh, not for long. Not for long. <laughs> Unless there's some twist in this two-part episode. There's, I think Maybe. there's got to be, but yeah. again, I, I, I don't know. I've not seen the second episode yet. I, I also wrote a, note, a, a tiny bit later on as well, which seems in bad taste. <laughs> We'll come to that. <laughs> uh, I didn't realize the end. The the the, the ending was going to be as dark as it was. To be <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. Um. Anyway, the the family get held for questioning. Um. After this, but but Mulder's like adamant that they didn't do this. Um. And he wants to to convince them because we see this scene where um. Uh. The, I think Skinner's briefing the the team. Uh, on what's happened and all the evidence and this note as well specifically, um, but Mulder basically comes in and and throws a spanner in the works. It's tip classic Mulder, uh, sort of whenever he's involved in in a case, he's yeah. like, no, this isn't true. This you know, th- there's something else at work here. Um, Scully thinks he's better out of order, but then he basically proves that there's something else to this. Uh, he he finds a missing persons case from 1987. And uh, the note, uh, it's another kind of uh, ransom note, but also at the the end of this, it says the exact same line about don't shoot, uh, nobody shoots at Santa. And all the case details were very similar as well: locked doors, yeah. no uh, visible break in. They they mention as well that the, I mean, I think they bring this up later on, but the uh, the the same woman saw a vision of her son dead mm-hmm. before he disappeared. Um, so yeah, um, it's the same thing. Um, 
but yeah, we we get all this explained to us because Mulder and Scully go to visit this woman in jail. And this is where I realized this isn't going to be an alien story. I was like, this is something different. And I was like, mm-hmm. okay, like this is interesting because we've been constantly led uh, up the garden path that that um, Samantha was abducted by aliens. And now it feels like this, this doesn't seem the case. This is something else. Yeah, there's... <sighs> It threw up a lot up in the air, to be honest, with the sort of the mythology of this series. Um, but again, it's hard to sort of discuss that without seeing the second part because, mm. I, I, you know what, I I really enjoyed this episode, and I will tell you how I can tell I really enjoyed it when it finished. All I wanted to do was put that second episode on. Mm. Like I just I I was craving more. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. um, I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes. It definitely seems like there's some there's more to learn. Yeah, definitely. And um, and the the involvement of uh, again I'm jumping forward, but the involvement of um, Mumda. As yeah, well. yeah, definitely. Yeah, something's think, going on there. I don't, I don't know what, but yeah, there's some something else is happening there, and I don't know why or what how it's connected to something. Maybe it is aliens. At the end of this, we'll find out that it is something to do with that. But at this point, I was like, I don't think it is. I think there's mm. there's a change here in what they want to do. But anyway, they they go to visit this woman in jail um uh, and we find out that she was convicted uh for the murder of her, her son um and she pled not guilty she was convinced that she did nothing wrong and then all of a sudden um she changed her plea um and said that she killed him the body's there uh, all and did it in a fit of uh insanity basically so that she could yeah. try and get off um of the charge and this was like years into a sentence um, but yeah, they mention as well that uh, yeah she'd seen the the uh, the son dead, which is what the guy had seen when he went to vi- visit his daughter or when yeah. he went to check on his daughter. Um, so yeah, there's all these things that align. And Mulder, at this point, is he basically says to her that you know he's going to help. You need to you need to help us by basically telling these people that um this backing the, up their story, basically. backing up their story, and also letting them know that this is going to be okay. And as they're walking away, um, Scully basically says that he's being irresponsible, that, you know, he's leading this investigation in the direction that he wants it to, kind of leading questions and all this stuff. Oh, for um, sure. And he, and, he, and he is. Like, don't get me wrong, the, the, the facts do point that way. But also, I was very aware watching this that Mulder is sat in front of a prisoner convincing them that they're innocent. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And exactly, it was like... Yeah. Whether it, she is or not, that can't be the white practice for no. a, an officer of the law. <laughs> no, it definitely feels like yeah. I think leading questions are a big no-no in like sort of questioning because exactly yeah, yeah. it just warps everything. But yeah, anyway, he tells her that he's gonna he's gonna help her, and as as Scully sort of um, uh, tell him off outside, he basically says that you know these kids are alive. I'm gonna he says I'm gonna save these kids, and I had the biggest flash of do you know always sunny where mac says i'm gonna save my dad and then immediately the thing is mac kills his dad yeah yeah <laughs> i i wrote now this is incredibly bad taste now Luke, i wrote are you sure you want to do this <laughs> well, i might as well i've got to be honest <laughs> i wrote as a joke Mulder finds some kids dead bodies like as the title card is we're gonna pass up like pop up after this I didn't realize that was actually what was going to happen. Predicted the plot, amazing. <laughs> I was like, that was a watch. I was like, I was right, but I've never wanted w- to be <laughs> less right than I was. I wish I was wrong. Yeah, I wish I was wrong. Yeah, uh, it was. Yeah, <laughs> it was unfortunate. That's what it was. Um, but that's all that popped into my head at that moment. I was like, he's not going to find these kids. <laughs> um, but he does. He does. Well, um, it's 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 interesting because throughout the episode. They do try and sort of put a light at the end of the tunnel for the majority mm-hmm. of it, which yeah. the ending kind of shocked me, to be honest, yeah. because yeah. Definitely. throughout the episode, they, they, they keep on throwing these little breadcrumbs of these kids are all white, Samantha's all white, or they're, they're, they're in a different place, oh, they're Especially all enjoying their see, life. When you see the vision of the girl, like when it visits her mom, yeah. it's like, oh, they've got to be somewhere. Like, where are they? Is this like, I, I thought maybe it is aliens at this point, or like there's something... Yeah, there's something connecting them some way or other. I didn't realize it was going to be as dark as it is. Yeah, for sure. Was, but yeah. Um, uh, at this point, we find out that the Lapiers are uh, released. There's no evidence 
for them and now they have this kind of link to another case they can argue that you know this has happened yeah. before and there's something else at work here which pisses skinner off to no end yeah. he says he's given them the twinkie defense now i've never heard of the twinkie defense do you know no. what this is i do not do you not know? I was asking you at this point. Oh, you were asking me. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know um, what the Tungi defense is. <laughs> I imagine it's like pleading, mm. like craziness. Not craziness, but like um, supernatural like mm. elements. I think the fact that they've got this woman to corroborate their story means that they don't have to like have a strong defense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think what's, what's annoying Skinner more than anything is Mulder making public like almost promises in front of cameras that he's yeah, going to yeah. find these people safe and sound, that they're going to in- increase their efforts to find a tenfold. And Mulder's like, and we know this from just watching television of news articles. That's something you just don't do. You don't make promises on cases like this. That's the thing. It, it was weird seeing him um, like in front of a camera in public because that he's not this type of person uh Mulder is always private and he never does talks to people like because he doesn't want his theories out there in the world really because he, he is being the he is being the fbi agent he wishes they had when samantha went missing mm. he he when samantha went missing he wanted someone to search endlessly for her and i and they and they didn't and so he is going to be that for this girl he and he want he when he was younger, he wanted someone to come out in front of cameras, in front of family, and say, "I will not rest until we find Samantha safe and sound." No one's gonna say that to him because that's not the way it works. But because he wants that so much, he's being that for this family, yeah, exactly. which yeah. is great and lovely, but also from a position of power, completely irresponsible. Mm. Yeah, it's um. Yeah, uh, it's 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 an interesting position to see him in, really. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, in the meantime, he's flawed. while that was he's flawed, he, he is. Yeah, but at the end of the day, he's he's so close to this case that um, yeah, he's gonna have these biases. I Google what the Twinkie defense is. Go on. Um, also a bit of darkness in in oh, this. Yeah. So it's a derisive a derisive label for an improbable legal defense. Uh, it was coined during the uh, trial of defendant Dan White for the murder of San Francisco City supervisor Harvey Milk, which I think there's a film on, isn't there? Uh, Milk. Yeah, I think uh, Sean Penn, I think, was was Harvey Milk. But anyway, um, yeah, for the murders of uh, Harvey Milk and Mayor uh, George Moscone, White's defense was that he'd suffered diminished diminished capacity as a result of his depression, a symptom of which was a change in diet from healthy food to Twinkies and other sugary foods. So he basically said he was depressed because he was eating Twinkies. And that caused him to quit a crime. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I don't know if that got him off, but it at least gave him a uh, a plausible sort of, not a murder. Yeah, it was plausible. Manslaughter kind of, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Jesus. Okay, that's um, good to know. That's interesting. Um, Talking of more darkness, so we find this, uh, this is all happening, so they, they've been released. Uh, and um, we know all this because Skinner is absolutely admonishing Mulder at this point, where Scully enters the room and says, um, uh, Mulder, we need to need to speak to you. Um, and Skinner at the time is like, Oh, it can wait. And yeah, as soon as, as soon as Scully said, no, it can't. It was like, uh Oh, yeah. What's happened now? And we find out that, um, Mulder's mom, I'll give her a real name as she's died now. Tina, um, has found, been found dead at her home. Um, so yeah, not so up and at them. I wrote Mumda out. <laughs> um, up which, and at him. Out. out. <laughs> yeah. Um we find that she'd basically um they go to her to her house, they find that she'd overdosed on sleeping pills, um and p- put tape all around like the, the cracks in the floorboard uh, not the floorboards, the door and stuff like that to seal in the gas in the oven. Um, uh, she must have put the gas on as well. Mm-hmm. So kind of like a double whammy kind of thing. Like, you know what I mean? Like if one didn't, the other would. Um, and Which we also oh. Mulder to to his credit, I think is onto something here. I don't think this is as clear cut as it looks. I know Scully does an autopsy later and she finds nothing wrong, but it is it is all very convenient and it does look staged. And Mulder points that out in this scene. 
Yeah, yeah. The um, he's yeah, he's not convinced. They they also find as well that all the pictures of Samantha have been um sort of destroyed or, mm-hmm. or removed in some way, and like because uh, yeah, it's all, all gone. And uh, and again, Mulder, it, it, it's a difficult one at this point because um, Mulder might be onto something that there's something wrong going here, but because he's so close to it and and it's his mom, it just seems like somebody grappling with you know something terrible that's happened he's like no this can't be right because of this this and this this can't yeah. have happened um, and his demeanor changed as well he becomes yeah less sort of logical and more like even the things he's saying like even if it is sort of like makes sense it's panicked it's rushed it's like all over the place he's like flipping from one subject to the next and mm. you can sort of start to see uh, this is the point where i was like oh this isn't a good story for Mulder. This no. is Mulder going through basically reliving trauma, and, and that's what we're seeing throughout this this episode. Yeah, yeah. Which is um, hard to see. I, 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 credit to Duchovny because um, I thought he played this this episode fantastically throughout. Yeah, hundred percent. I I feel like he absolutely. I mean, uh, we we always like credit David Duchovny on this this show anyway, but. I think in this episode particularly, he showed the other side to to Mulder. Yeah, we've mm-hmm. all we can we know that he's got the comedic chops and he can do the the, the sort of action and you know uh, you know funny lines and this that and the other. But he can also so easily do um, very very serious like character acting of uh, being somebody who is suffering. Well, that's the thing. Like we've we've uh, applauded both Anderson and Dukovny yeah, yeah. throughout. Um, but I've always felt like Duchovny favoured more the sort of comical, charming role, and Julian Anderson excels at the sort of serious, dramatic um, like roles that she needs to play. Um, but I mean, the the crying. I mean, again, I'm jumping around, but the when 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 Mulder breaks down crying, that's as heart wrenching moment you're going to see in X Files, at least up to yeah. this point. Like yeah. it tore me apart. I I, I got a te- teary eyed watching that. It, this it reminded me, and the last time we saw Mulder in this kind of place in this situation was the episode. I can't remember what it, exactly the episode. In the church. The church. Yeah. The I, end I, of the church. I think I, I believe it's the second episode of the first season. I did yes, the exact yeah. same thing. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, it, it reminded me so much of that. Uh, and we yeah we haven't seen him this sort of yeah emotionally wrought like for such a long time but um it just shows that he he, he has the range to to do everything oh really. yeah for sure um but anyway yeah Mulder believes that she was murdered he doesn't believe that this was a suicide and he asks scully to do an autopsy which she's flabbergasted that he's even asked her to do this but he says he doesn't trust anybody else to do it um so she agrees and we get to results later but um in meanwhile Mulder goes to see the mother in prison again uh, and um, uh, wait there. Which one is it? That's I'm trying to think now. Does he go and see the uh, mother in prison, or does he go to see the uh, Amanda's mom? I can't remember who he sees. No, he goes to see mother in prison. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember her name. Um, but uh, she uh, he goes to see her and talk to her again, and um, she explains that Samantha is what she calls a walking. Mm-hmm. Um. And she says that he's been, she's been taken to shield her from all the harm that she'd suffer in life. Yeah, um, the, this whole sort of dialogue is kind of out there. Like it doesn't, it it could quite easily mean they're on a farm somewhere to the dead. You know what I mean? Like it, it didn't really give us any answers. Um, yeah, it's really vague. Yeah, that she she mentions at one point that they they live among the starlight, so they're tough mm. to see, but she can yeah. see them whenever she wants. She says they're um, okay, but she doesn't know where they are. Yeah, they're up yeah, in the stars. Exactly. Yeah. And then that line, like you said as well, which is like, they've been taken to avoid all the pain of mm. life. So it it could quite easily mean the exact same as like, oh, they were killed. Yeah. And, yeah, and exactly. so it's hard, it's hard to sort of gain anything from this. And Mulder's much the same where he's trying to get answers and he's, he's just getting kind of riddles almost. Mm-hmm. Um, after this, uh, we go back to Mulder's apartment, I think it is at this point, and uh, Scully uh, comes to meet him. Mulder thinks at this point, and he starts laying out his entire theory of this, and this is where he's kind of scrambling a bit. Um, but he, he thinks that his, his mom uh, must have passed on a note, or she 
uh, had more information about what happened to his sister because she left a, a, a call on his uh, answering machine and he mm-hmm. was like, I didn't manage to speak to her, but she had something to say. Um, he thinks that it wasn't an alien abduction now um, and he thinks that um, that his, his mom figured this out and that's why she's been killed. But Scully just absolutely shatters his world basically by telling him no she definitely committed suicide um and also she was ill she had uh something called um paget's carcinoma which is it's kind of um it's another form of cancer basically like breast mm-hmm. cancer from what i've read um so yeah um she had this and was basically dying of this um disease anyway um and so yeah yeah and she, she knew about it as well yeah yeah and she knew about it and yeah that they this suicide is legit and this just absolutely destroys Mulder. He just breaks down at this point. Like, um, yeah, uh, there's, there's not a lot to watch. Yeah, there's, there's not a lot to say in terms of it. It's just like this guttural kind of performance from from uh, David Duchovny in this. And yeah, it it reminded me so much of the 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 scene in the church of just a man who's just absolutely lost because he's at this point he's lost everything. Like, he's, yeah, his his sister has been abducted and as we find out, potentially killed. Um, and he doesn't dad... even know whether that's the truth, like the thing yeah, that he's yeah. dedicated his life to as well. He's yeah. losing faith in that, and yeah, 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 really tough to watch. Yeah, but um, but on the, on the plus side, great scene, really, really yeah. great scene in in how it's done. Like, um, yeah, it, it was just a phenomenal, phenomenal scene. But yeah, just this really is tough. the sort of scene where I was like. I'm really enjoying this episode. I'm very yeah. much enjoying this episode. Mm-hmm. And, we, and, I, and I still don't know what's going on, which is yeah. great. But there's uh, so what, what I will say is this. It walks a fine line, which I, I don't think the mythology episodes have been that great at recently. And what I mean by that is, I don't know what's going on, and I'm left in a mystery, but it's not convoluted. It's not like mm-hmm. 17 different storylines all at once. I, it's not that I'm confused by the storyline. I just, it's a simple narrative that I can follow, but it's a mystery. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And more, more often than not, especially the last season or two, um, they've tried to have a mystery by adding 17 different elements that you've got to try and follow all at once. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, th- this is kind of like a mystery down to sort of brass tacks where it's yeah. somebody close to one of the main characters, something's happened to her, and you're trying to figure out what this is. Exactly. Yeah. Which I think was so effective. I, yeah. So I, this is the, as I say, this, this scene came along and I was like, because again, why, why, are we, why do we care about the mystery if we don't know how it's making the characters that we love, the characters that we've followed through seven seasons, how, how it makes them feel, how it's changing them. Mm-hmm. Give, the, give them time to show that. And like when you see like um, Mulder here, just a broken man, it, it's, it's heartbreaking, but God, God so, so great to watch. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, we then see... Um, and it's kind of been they've shown different clips of this throughout the episode. I just didn't know where to put it in the kind of rundown yeah. of it. But we see this um, family arrive at uh, a Christmas themed ranch. It's this like uh, it's weird. Like I've never seen anything. Yeah, it's like, like, a, like, like a Santa's grotto type an, thing. An but, all yeah. year round Santa's grotto. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, they, they, this family turn up and they're like, "Oh, the kids want to see Santa," and like he goes into the back room. And we see this man has uh, all this video equipment, and we basically see that he's been videotaping kids uh, yeah. in, in his sort of ranch. And we have seen it earlier on in the episode where somebody's been watching a video recording of uh, Amber, the, the 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 girl that's been kidnapped. Mm-hmm. Um, so we put two and two together that this is the man who's kidnapped Amber. Um, and uh, after this, we see. Um, <laughs> Mulder at this point is visibly sort of distraught. Um, but uh they they ask Mulder to come with uh, or they being Scully and Skinner ask Mulder to come with them to speak to uh the mother of uh Amber, um, because she's got more information and uh there's more to it basically that this might be some something supernatural. So they go to meet uh to them to meet them again and she says that she's seen a vision of Amber. Uh, uh, she was standing in front of her in a room, kind of like what we'd seen this other um, woman in jail had seen. And um, she says that she was trying to speak to her, but she couldn't say any words. There weren't any words coming out. She was just seeing her m- mouthing words. Um, and she said that it looked like she was trying to say the number 74. 
but that's mm. the only thing that you could take from it. And Mulder at this point sort of says, "Yeah, okay, fair." He <laughs> didn't say it exactly like it that. It basically does though. <laughs> yeah, like he's like yeah. very dismissive of it. Yeah, yeah. And as he walks outside, he basically says, "The kid's dead. There's nothing I can do on this case. Um, I'm too close to it to make any any kind of like sound judgment." Mm. And he says, "I need time off. I want to be taken off the case." And just yeah, yeah. And it's the most like fucked up I've ever seen Mulder. You know what I mean? He's just not even interested in this case anymore. He's like, I just want to go home and take well, time off. The funny thing is what he's saying is logical. Yeah. I, I thought this was really interesting. He basically sort of turns around and says uh, so basically says, if she's telling the truth and she saw a ghost then she saw a ghost, which means that she's dead. Yeah, yeah. If she's not telling the truth and she didn't see a ghost it means that they're crazy and they probably killed their daughter. Yeah, Either yeah. way, it's not looking good. So he's he's being logical and he's thinking it through, but he's not being Mulder in the sense of he doesn't care about the mystery of it. He doesn't want yeah, he doesn't yeah. want to find out. Yeah, he's, he's, he's just gone. Yeah. Oh yeah, well this is this is this is probably the, 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 the likeliest outcome. I don't really care about it either way, which yeah. is so unMulder. That's and that's yeah. why it's like so shocking to see because you're just like. No, no, this isn't this isn't the way you work. This isn't the way yeah. you're wired. Yeah, it's it's completely counter to his entire character. And yeah, it's weird seeing this. And then especially in the next scene as well, where we basically see him being driven to the airport. Mm-hmm. Um, like uh, Mulder, um, Skinner and Scully are sat in the front driving him and he's just sat in the back, just, just blank face staring at the window. Yeah. Just absolutely gone. Um, but as they're driving... Uh, Scully notices on one of the roadsides, uh, Route 74, um, or the, well, it's the number 74 and it relates to Route 74. She pulls out a map and she notices that on Route 74 there's actually a Santa's village. Uh, and she kind of connects the dots and says, let's investigate because of, you know, the, the Santa Claus references on the notes. Yeah. They go to visit this sort of, um, this grotto, <laughs> um, and, yeah, in typical X Files fashion, they um, they're sort of rummaging around the back. Uh, yeah. Skinner's left on his own at one point, and um, Mulder and Scully go inside, find this sort of this room with the all the tapes. And they tapes know, going back to the sixties as well, yeah. which I thought was interesting because I bet you there's a video of Samantha in there somewhere. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's all these tapes, all this video equipment, and he also note well when they put one on. Uh, look would have it. It's it's Amber's mm-hmm. uh, a tape of like somebody filming Amber, um, and this is where I just thought Mulder is absolutely going to lose it at this guy. Like yeah. if, if they catch him, but uh, this guy locks the door on them, shuts them in, and just runs for it. Um, Skinner manages to see him uh, and sort of chases after him. Mulder and Scully burst out, and they all go in pursuit of him. And just as he's running across this field, um. Skinner shoots into the air to just stop him in his tracks. They put him under arrest, and then we get this slow pan, and you start to realize exactly where they are. Yeah. As we pan up, we see this field with all different mounds of earth, which at this point you can only assume are graves. Yeah, small graves. Children. Small graves. Um, hairs on my arms stood up. Like it was such yeah. a. This X Files hasn't done this. It's an incredibly dark turn for yeah. for the ending of an X Files episode. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, it's never been. There's always been like death and and mm-hmm. uh, this kind of stuff. And you've had think, horror elements like yeah. Home and stuff like that, which yeah. have those sort of like shocking moments. This felt different. This felt like this was this was dark. It was brutal. And yeah, yeah. But again, like I just all I wanted, I I, I could tell like, and Mold doesn't still still doesn't feel the same even now. And like. Mm-hmm. As I was watching this, I was like, is this the end? Is this, uh, are we, we going to find out that this is the killer and that's it? Mm. And then it was like, to be continued. And I, I was like, yes, come on. Like, I was just, I'm so glad we get to revisit what's going on because yeah, I really enjoyed yeah. the story. Yeah, it's, um, well, I mean, at this point, yeah, that, that's the end of the episode. Basically so the end, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we might as well go into what, what did you think of the episode? Yeah, I thought it was great. I really enjoyed it. Um, I, I, d- as I was watching it, I, I didn't think it was like a standout episode. But then the more the the more the episode went on, I was like, I'm thoroughly enjoying this. And mm-hmm. like I said, that ending to me, and then to see the TV continued, I was like, okay, let here we go. I want to I want to revisit this straight away. I want to get back into this. Showed me how much I enjoyed it. Um, and I'm really looking. 
you know me, I've had trouble in the past of like judging uh, an episode if it's a two parter because I like mm. to see the full thing. Yeah, I think this one you definitely have to see the and second. And you definitely part. do have to see it, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So like it's tough to judge it, but I think the best thing I can say about it is I can't wait to watch the next episode. Yeah. Um I, I had similar thoughts as well. Like I, I thought it was a really strong episode, like with these really powerful like character moments for, for Mulder. Um um I can understand like because of what it seems, I mean it might change. We don't know really the end of the episode, but I can understand it being controversial because it's changed the Samantha story or seemingly changed the Samantha story. Well this is the thing thought. I was gonna I was gonna ask you that what like what do you think's happened? Because it we were it's assumed that this guy is involved, but also mm. there's still supernatural elements. There's still the parents seeing visions. There's still no break-ins, no visible entry. So what do I we think is going on here? That, that's the thing. Like, I don't really know. Like, Same. There's, 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 like, I can't even theorize because there's nothing really to theorize about other than... So all that we know is that the parents are not involved, but they're sort of brainwashed in some way. Mm-hmm. Um, to be complicit with this, or at least not know that it's happening, and it's been happening for well since the sixties. So, like in this world, forty years it's been happening. And this guy's got to be involved because not only does he bury the bodies, we mm-hmm. assume, but he also chooses the targets based on who turns up at his ranch. And is, is that the way it works? Is it, is it random? Is it just Maybe, if you happen yeah. to go to that ranch, then that's unlucky it's you? I, it, Maybe. Um, I don't know how this is going to play out. It's going to be interesting. It, it, it is as well. Because like as well, looking at the guy, he doesn't look uh, old enough to be doing this for since the 60s. You know Very good I mean? points. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, he looks like in his 40s, but like... If it's forty years, he's, has he been doing it since he's like born? Like, that, yeah, that. very good point. So, like, I mean, maybe it is. Maybe he's a lot older than he, than I thought. But even if he's in his fifties, though, he was doing it when he's ten. Like, that's mm-hmm. no way. Like, that seems. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, we, we have to learn more about this character as well because we really don't know who this guy is. No. Um, but yeah, I thought I can understand it being controversial, but I actually don't mind it that much. Like, if it is changing it to a more grounded story, like I. It's it's really brave of like the X Files to do that to just go if they turned around now and said no this is just like a, a, a prolific child mur- murderer you know what I mean like who's like that's how this has happened it's like whoa I didn't expect the X Files to go in be that a direction bold bold move yeah I mean uh, and I again, don't think it's gonna be that but no no I I I'm not I'm not sure it's gonna be that but who knows at this point it could be anything they mm-hmm. they've sort of spun around but but yeah I think. It's hard to judge it like uh, completely because it's so dependent on what what the hell has happened to to these kids. So we yeah, you need to find out. So we'll see if it nails, nails the landing. Really, <laughs> last question before production notes. Yeah, Monda, dead or alive? I no, think she, she's actually the, alive. the body's there, and she the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the yeah, body's there. Dead. She's gotta yeah, be dead. Yeah, she's dead. But was she killed or did she kill herself? Like, yeah, that's probably a better question. I yeah. she's got to have been killed, hasn't she? Yeah, I, I think it'd be too, it'd be too clean cut if she would killed herself. Like I think in this, especially when she's like, as Mulder said, she was going to tell him about something. So surely she's not going to not tell him this. Mm, yeah, thing, like if she wanted to speak to him. So yeah, we we shall see. I get, it's a it's a a lot of this is riding on next episode. So yeah, it'd yeah, be interesting sure. to see see what happens there. Luke's production notes. Although both the season four episode Paper Hearts and the season five episode Redux, Redo, sorry, I can't, I never remember how you pronounce that. I think it's Redo, um, to uh, had dealt with uh, possible explanations for Samantha Mulder's fate. The issue had yet to be resolved when the series moved into its seventh season. Now, this is something I didn't know, but like, I, I don't think it's outside of the realm of possibility of this it's not a spoiler as such but it's sort of something to think about going forward with the rest of this series series creator chris carter was well aware that season seven might have been the show's last so he decided that with uh sign on Zeit, the show would start to conclude the story he explained the expectation was that if this was going to be the final season that the finale would be about Mulder's sister we wanted to deal with this with that sooner rather than later 
who wanted to wrap up Mulder's emotional story with his sister and do it in such a way that would emphasize David Duchovny's dramatic abilities. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, I didn't realize this is the point where they thought it was going to end. Yeah, I didn't. Knowing that there's two more series after this and then two more in the revival series. When they series, come back, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting to go, okay, so this is what they... How much are they going to wrap up in this sort of series and what's going to linger over into the rest? And like, Because we do hear a lot of um, people saying, oh, it, it, it drops off in kind of quality after a bit. And it's like, is it after this series? Because like they kind of finished the story and then mm-hmm. who knows? I guess we'll see. Executive producer Frank Spotnitz felt that the episode bore stylistic similarities to Paper Hearts. However, unlike that episode, Sign and Zeit in its second part, Closure, so that's the episode title for next week. So that sounds, that sounds conclusive. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Set it to actually answer the question of Samantha's disappearance. Spotnitz later explained uh it's just let me just double check this actually oh we go into spoiler territory okay no it's fine i'll carry on um spotnitz later explained it's similar in the in the sense that what you always thought happened to samantha may not have actually happened paper hearts never ultimately answers the question so we had people come up to us and say okay so we know that she's dead so what happened so we decided to at once to answer the question so again I don't think that explains it. It says that she's other people thought she was dead, but is she dead? I'm, yeah, it's, yeah. It's hard to sort of take away from that that answer. I had to be very careful with these production notes. If you, I can if you imagine, guess. yeah. I think um, we're getting into sort of, as you say, if they're closing up or they're, they're thinking about closing storylines up, we're going to get into this sort of territory now where we've got to be yeah, careful. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I do have to <laughs> do some extra vetting. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you mentioned about what the, the the title was. Um, so these are two production notes that I found really interesting. So apparently there was a lot of um hindrances to the production of this episode. So several accidents hindered the production of the episode. The first of which involved uh revolved around a fake ransom note, uh that included the threatening line, "Don't do anything, or we'll kill your baby." The plot prop department. God, I need to finish this up soon. The prop mm-hmm. department had mocked up this document for the scene in which uh, Miss Lapierre automatically writes the kidnapper's message. A crew member for the show later took the note, including uh, included in a folder with other documents, to a payphone before driving to the shooting location. And after his call, he neglected to pick up the folder. <gasps> a person watching the crew member became suspicious of his behaviour and called the police. Later, the crew member realised his mistake and returned to retrieve the note, where he was promptly arrested. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Director Kim Manners later called the situation a mess. <laughs> That's... It's like something from a TV show. That is insane. Yeah. Imagine turned up and it's like, uh, we found you know, to be like, oh, <laughs> cheers, thanks. Like, well, I was looking for that. <laughs> uh, um, and the the final note I've got down here, there's another one actually I wanted to bring up because I, I saw it in the, there's a connections bit, but anyway, I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, the second major event that hindered production involved lack of money. As production for Sign on Vite, uh, Sign on Zite was wrapping up, the production crew depleted all of their funding. However, there was one critical scene that still needed to be filmed. Uh, a short uh, sequence of a TV news anchor reporting on the events of the episode. To overcome the issue, producer Paul Rabwin got creative. He eschewed asking Fox for more money by instead reaching it to Rob Penfield, a local TV correspond- correspondent who was based out of L.A., uh, Rabwin asked Penfold um, to donate the needed news footage for a chance to be on the X-Files, an offer which Penfold happily accepted. According to Rabwin, he went to his studio setup, inserted a visual of a busy newsroom behind the correspondent, added some pictures of <laughs> pictures of the kidnapped children, and we had our scene. That's so, pretty cool, man, to be it's fair. Proper, I, I like stories about these like productions where you have to be like, you know, like d- ducking and dealing creative, and stuff like that. To, creative, yeah, yeah, to get yeah. stuff in. Like, um, it's always like whenever you hear about like uh, it's diff completely different production, but when like Jackass does stuff, um, like most productions, like they have to get um, clearance to film somewhere. But when they first started with Jackass, they were like, 
we can't get clearance because if we go to somewhere and say we're going to do this, they'll be like, no way are you doing that. Yeah. So they just was like, well, we'll just shoot it. And when they say don't do that, we'll be like, yeah, sorry, we didn't know. <laughs> just yeah, for like, yeah, they yeah. just basically eschewed all knowledge of it. It's like that's how they get their footage. But yeah, there's all kinds of stories like this where it just, yeah, you just have to, I don't know, just go with the flow. It's just, interesting to see how, it, how it, the behind the scenes of a little peek yeah. behind the curtain. Um, there was one of a note. It's not really a production note, but um, it's a weird thing in how time works. So SpongeBob SquarePants, right? Okay. Do you see that as a new thing? Um, or not new, new, but you know what I mean, like new, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah newish. Like it was one of the cartoons that like came out later. Yeah, SpongeBob SquarePants. A toy is in this kid's room. I was like, hang on, when did the X Files and <laughs> This crossover, I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I didn't realise Spongebob came out like 1999. I was like, Jesus, it's older than I thought. Like, Yeah, then, I would have said mid-2000s. That's what I thought. I was like, literally, I was looking like, and it was like connections. I was just looking through all the other stuff. And it was like, there's this toy, there's this toy. And it was like, and a Spongebob Squarepants. I was like, what? I was like, Is he time <laughs> troubled? And yeah, I had to do some search. And it's like, yeah, I'm, it's, it's way older than I thought it was, but... Yeah, there we go. Anyway, um, that's production notes. So, Crit X Files. It stinks. Welcome to the Crit X Files. What would you rate this episode? I'm going to give this one a a cautious eight point five. 8.5. Which is quite yeah. high, but it's not an 8.5 until I see the second one. I need to see the second one first. It's a it's a tentative 8.5. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I gave it an eight. Um, for similar reasons. I thought it was yeah, it was a really strong episode. Um, it could get upgraded. I, I probably wouldn't upgrade this, but if the second episode is an uh, all timer as well, it's gonna get a good score. Kind Overall. of because of this one as well, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um Funnily enough, with 2,841 votes, this got an 8 on uh, IMDb. Eight. Interesting. Spot on. Although, I did have a look uh, at Wikipedia, and apparently the reception, uh, initial reception to this episode, was quite mixed, um, simply because people weren't happy with the, um, the Samantha story changing. Like, they weren't, mm, they didn't, I they felt like, they felt like... Um, they were shortchanged a little bit. Yeah, basically, yeah. Uh, um, which I can understand, I, re- I can, because they have changed it and they've, they've kind of, uh, what do you call it, retconned it. So it's like sort of said, no, it's not like that. It's, it's actually this. So I can well, understand. If people, they you know, have, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but like, it looks like it's going that way. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I yeah. get that. Um, so yeah, I can understand people's annoyance. But again, I don't hate it. Like, I don't mind the direction that this, the, the characters mm. or that the story of that character's gone. So. We'll see. I guess. Yeah, we'll see. yeah. I'll, it, I'll we'll be able to give more solid opinions on that next week. I think. <laughs> yeah. If if we're giving out fours next week, you know what we think of the Samantha story. If, <laughs> if Samantha next week comes back and went, oh, I just went to get milk. Then I'll be like, hey, fuck, fuck this show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, might be the last episode. So yeah, <laughs> get prepared. Go. Um. But that that's it for this week, really. So um, if you want to get in touch with the show, um, you can contact us on Twitter. Uh, it's probably the best bet. You can get us on there. Uh, we do have a Facebook and email as well. Which uh, Emails I do actually check. So, you know, drop us an email if you want to write something a bit longer than a tweet, I guess. Um, but that's it for this week. Next week, we are covering the second episode of this entitled Closure. Um, so... I assume we're going to get some closure, or right. someone is going to get some closure. <laughs> <laughs> um, which yeah, feels very final, but we shall see. We'll have to wait and see what happens. I might watch this episode as once we finish this podcast, to be <laughs> honest with you, because I am genuinely just itching to watch it. Yeah, yeah, it's one of those proper cliffhangers in it where mm-hmm. um, you're yeah, you can't wait to find out what what happened. Yeah. Imagine if you had to wait a week for this. Oh, uh, in, couldn't, couldn't. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, everybody else is going to have to wait a week for this next episode, so sorry guys, but we'll see you next time. Bye!